Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. It is a perfect weather day in Charlotte. Does anybody want to win the NFC East, Tony Siragusa? These Redskins feel like they have a shot today. It's a big one. Yeah, they do. You know what? Nobody talks about the Redskins. All you hear about are the Giants, Philadelphia, the Dallas Cowboys. This is a better team than you think. But the one thing, they need to believe that they can win. Until they win a game on the road, no one is going to consider them a threat. Offensively, they need to take chances today and stretch the field. And that defensive line needs to show up. They have to take control of that line of scrimmage, not only rush the passer, but to stop that run, because that's how this Carolina team lives. Well, you're not lying about that. They run it more than any team in the NFL under head coach Ron Rivera. His team perfect at 9-0. Jay Gruden, his second year, is head man of the Redskins. Four up, five down. Redskins won the toss, deferred to the second half, and their kicker falls down. Mike Tolbert, their fullback, will give them very good field position at the 38-yard line. They had a little bit of rain here last night. Just a little, but I was down on the field in pregame. It didn't feel much in terms of moisture or anything like that. It's almost like a skier that just loses a blade when he's going down in the slalom. But well, here comes the main man for the Panthers, and that is Cam Newton. Six rushing touchdowns. He added another one in that victory last week. We were there, Charles, in Tennessee. He is everything for the Carolina Panthers and has been all year long. Jonathan Stewart wrapped up immediately at the line of scrimmage, slipped the first tackle, and maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Once more, Andrew Norwell is not in the lineup at left guard. Third straight game he has missed. They're led by the Pro Bowler Ryan Khalil. And today they are going to be without Corey Brown. Devin Funches, a rookie out of Michigan, makes his first NFL start. He looks a lot like Kelvin Benjamin, who is not playing, is injured in terms of physical stature. Under pressure, Newton throws, and it's incomplete. That was Trent Murphy, who led the country in sacks two years ago, his final year at Stanford. Redskins defense has been gashed all year long Charles especially against the run and that's where they have to make a big big time change Terrence Knight and pop roast in the middle was brought in for that reason and at linebacker Will Compton has played very well since moving into the starting lineup and Deshaun Goldson he is the key back there at safety wants to make every single play. Yeah, Keenan Robinson inactive today so Compton another start good protection this time and the throw is off the hand of Funches. Three and out for the Panthers to start the day. Couldn't ask for a better start if you're Washington. They've tried to hit Funches twice now. Kelvin Benjamin out all year with a knee injuries on injured reserve. Funches looks like him in stature. Hasn't assumed his playing ability just yet. A second ball out of the reach of Devin Funches, and they'll have to punt it away. Great start for Washington. The young man who grew up just down the road from Charlotte waits back on the punt, played collegiately at Duke is Jamerson Crowder. And from the 14 yard line with a penalty flag down, he is chopped down after a one yard return. First one down there, Teddy Williams. But again, we wait on the penalty. I thought that penalty came in the vicinity of the gunner working, working his way downfield. Sometimes they end up over on the sideline and the penalty flag comes out if they ran out on their own as opposed to being pushed out of bounds. During the kick, player of the putting team running out of bounds on their own, number 21. Five yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. Well, Mr. Davis, you are uh, doing your Mike Pereira impersonation <laughs> right from the get go today. Get lucky every so often. Well, trying to duplicate what he did last week is Kirk Cousins. The NFC's Offensive Player of the Week, career high four touchdowns in the route of New Orleans. Like the Redskins, he's been a very different player at home as opposed to going on the road. On the road, percentages change in a big no. way, but he's playing with a lot more confidence now. I expect Washington to take some shots early in this game. Alfred Morris has opened his career with three consecutive 1,000-yard rushing seasons. 
Well, they've had a lot of changes up front, even going back to training camp and then injuries at center and left guard. We'll keep an eye on the center. Larebus, who's had some issues the last couple of weeks, first time he's ever played center. But they have plenty of weapons. Plenty of guys to throw to. Deshaun Jackson back. They think he's fully healthy. Jordan Reed transforms them at tight end, though, especially in third down situations when he's on the field. Second down and eight. Perfect throw. And that's Garcon on the first down up to the 37 yard line. Carolina, one of three teams in the NFL to finish in the top 10 on defense in each of the last three years. They're there again this year. Kwan Short having a big breakout year in the dynamic duo of Keek Lee and Davis. It's hard to believe Thomas Davis did not have a tackle last week in Tennessee. That won't happen a second time. And back deep, the safeties. Roman Harper and Kurt Coleman are having fantastic years to complement Josh Norman, who's having a Pro Bowl All-Pro year on the corner. A lot of wisdom back there with Harper, huh? Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice duo with Harper and Kurt Coleman. And slam to the deck is Morris and there's a man we mentioned a moment ago in his third year out of Purdue having his best season is Kwan Short. Watch the middle of the line. Watch the big guys working. Those big defensive tackles Short and low to the leg. They really get work done and look at Short going inside just slips right past Spencer Long. The reason he did it active hands. Showed long hands took him away. Long never even got a hand on K1 short before he spilled the play. And those linebackers did a great job of playing right off his penetration right there. Only a three man rush. And the catch made by Jordan Reed. Third year tight end out of Florida. Has been unable to stay healthy in each of his first three years, but man, when he's in there, he is a threat. There's no doubt about it because when you take a look at him and I don't want to just bore people with stats, but their percentage on third down without Jordan Reed playing in the two games he misses in the 30 percent. 48 percent on third down when Jordan Reed's in the game. A primary target on this down. Let's get further all right in the top eight in the league converting on third down. And third down here. They pick up Keekley on the blitz. Matt Jones, a beautiful job, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Kurt Coleman. And the former Ohio State Buckeye is down to the 31 yard line. There is a penalty flag in the secondary. This is going to be interesting for Carolina because there may be interference on this play. See which way it goes, but it's offensive or defensive. Offense, number 88. There you go. That pull is the time. First down. And they got Pierre Garcon for it. He's protesting the call. He thought he was the one who was interfered. Garcon in the bunch formation going downfield. Working against Josh Norman. You see where he pushed Norman down? That's where the flag came in before the interception. And Kurt Coleman for the second straight week ends up with an interception in the game. And Carolina is in business. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Panthers after the takeaway in business at the Washington 31 yard line, opening quarter of a scoreless game. We'll get back to those numbers in a moment. Of Cousins and the Redskins when they leave DC. Duke on first down. Great protection. And a bullet for a first down inside the 20. That defensive line for Washington cannot stop and just let Cam sit there all day or he'll pick them apart. And I like that they threw it on first down versus Washington's base defense, their run defense, not the great pass rushers on the field. That allows Newton a little bit of extra time and helps his offensive line. Stewart looking for running room and finds daylight. And he's down to the 11 yard line. We talked about it from the very beginning, Charles, and they're talking about it all the time in Redskin Nation. These numbers simply do not lie. No, and that's the issue for them to overcome their road woes. They've got to cut down on the interceptions, especially from Kirk Cousins. Four out of the five losses this year, he's thrown two or more interceptions in four of those games. That's the problem for them. When he doesn't throw picks, they play well. 
Fake it to Stewart. Throw it to Stewart. Touchdown, Stewart. And then a penalty flag comes in late. And that young man showed up with his Cam Newton jersey, and he's taking home a football. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 28, taunting for throwing the ball at their home. The 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So Jonathan Stewart, nice run on this drive, comes back, catches the ball. Let's see if he definitely gets into the end zone. There's the hit. That comes at him. Jerron Johnson, the safety starting today, his second start in a row. Late. I shouldn't say late, just, just a low hit trying to tackle him at the goal line. The Stewart got in. Point after by Graham Gano is good. So it started with the Kurt Coleman interception. Got him down to the 31 yard line. Capped off by the touchdown pass to Jonathan Stewart. 7 0 Panthers. Today's game is sponsored by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. Panthers off to a good start after the takeaway. Jonathan Stewart was very upset with the hit, and it looked like he had already crossed the plane of the end zone and took a hit down around the knee. From Jerron Johnson. We'll take a look at it here in a moment. Yeah, I thought he was going into the end zone. Johnson hit him low, and I think the pain is what made him a little upset at the end. Because Andre Roberts acted for the first time in three weeks. And a good return up to the 29 yard line. Well, you be the judge. Let's take a look. Stewart catches the ball in the flat, going into the end zone. And as he gets to the goal line, Johnson hits him with a tackle around the knees. And I think the pain more than anything Tony Saragusa made him react this way. I mean he's just disgusted right here saying you know pretty much I'm in the end zone. Why do you go and take a cheap shot like that at me. So I don't know. I don't think it granted a, uh, a penalty but who am I to judge. Yeah, I think he just at that point he was at the goal line as you said thought that he was in and probably felt like he shouldn't have been tackled at all. And that was the end of the play. Guys, Alfred Morris went in. He has a rib injury. He's questionable on his return. He had to leave the game last week. Did return against New Orleans. Now, first down, Cousins. Great protection. And it's Carson up to the 45 yard line. Completely different quarterback when he's not under pressure and he can just sit in that pocket with both feet on the ground, Charles. Exactly. And you know what I loved about that play call? Jay Gruden telling him, I'm still confident in you. You threw a pick. I come right back and I throw a pass. It's not even really a super safe pass. It's one that took some time to develop, stay in the pocket and deliver. It allowed Kirk Cousins to get a little bit of confidence back. Matt Jones are looking at in the backfield and they'll hand it to him. And he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Let's check in with Kirk Menefee back in Los Angeles. Well, Mark Sanchez has put the Eagles on the board already, getting the start for the injured Sam Bradford. He hooks up with Josh Huff. Huff takes it 39 yards, huffing and puffing, if you will. 7-0. They lead the Bucks in the first quarter. Tom, Charles, and Goose. Another one of those Oregon Ducks on the roster for Chip Kelly, Josh Huff. You know, it's funny, if we're going to talk about some of these NFC East teams as being in the hunt for a playoff, what about Tampa Bay? Yeah, in the, in the hunt. Five. Exactly, in the hunt of the NFC South. Cousins again, great protection, and wide open, streaking down the sideline to Sean Jackson. There is a penalty flag behind the line of scrimmage. And the one Actually, right at the line of scrimmage. And the one element they've been missing this year, big time explosive plays on offense. A lot of that because Deshaun Jackson missed six games for the pulled hamstring that was suffered in game one against Miami. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Defense number 24. That penalty is declined. The result of the play. Touchdown. Well, they have been waiting on Deshaun Jackson to get healthy because we've seen him do this for a long, long time. Right up at the top, there's Josh Norman. And he's got his hands in the face of Pierre Garcon. 
but to Sean Jackson, all he did was take off and run right past the nickel nickelback today, Colin Jones, who's playing because Charles Tillman is hurt, and Ben A. Ben Wickery has had to move to outside corner and away from nickel. Dustin Hopkins for the point after to tie it up, and it is good. So the Redskins have been looking for the home run ball all year. And they have arguably their biggest weapon in Jackson healthy again. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150. Every other truck is history. By Pizza Hut's Triple Treat Box, make any night a holiday. And by T-Mobile, ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. A big play certainly have not been a big factor for the Redskins this year. You know, sort of a footnote to that. The Redskins and the Falcons coming into play today the only two teams all year long where the pass itself had not traveled more than 20 yards in the year. Now I know that gets a little you know, minutia there if you will for lack of a better term. But with Deshaun Jackson healthy again look out that could change in a hurry. And out across the 21 yard line Joe Webb. 7-7 seven, seven game in the opening quarter. If we go back and look at the touchdown, they're playing what they call cover one, which means everyone's in man-to-man -man coverage with a free safety back in the middle of the field. There's Deshaun Jackson there. He's got a mismatch against Colin Jones. He's coming in to play nickelback today, and it's hard for Kirk Coleman to get all the way over the top and help him out from that point in the field with Deshaun Jackson's speed. Thus, the end, 56-yard touchdown pass. Deshaun Jackson's 31st touchdown pass, does a touchdown catch of 50 or more yards in his career. I call that a deep threat. <laughs> <laughs> Newton to throw on first half. Avoids a sack. Still in trouble. And finally is sacked all the way back to the seven yard line. Jason Hatcher the first one there. And Ryan Kerrigan finished him off. And, wow. Ryan, and Ryan Kerrigan, Tony, gets the credit for it here, but Jason Hatcher made the play. Yeah, Hatcher comes through free, but Cam does a great job of avoiding him. But the one thing, Hatcher doesn't give up. He keeps going at him. A lot of guys will just stay on the ground like, oh, I missed him, the ball's going to be gone. You've got to be relentless, especially a guy against a guy like Cam Newton. Yeah, Kerrigan will have to give him a little dap because he helped out his sack numbers. Buy him dinner or something, right? Exactly, but Hatcher, as you said, was relentless on that play. Well, both of them have big time contracts, and nobody scuffs when they pick up the tag. <laughs> but they come right back to the Panthers. And that's Jericho Cotri. Played collegiately at NC State with a big catch there. Eight of 19 makes third down much more manageable. And that's what they talk about all the time. Can we be in third manageable situations? Cotri working right here inside slot, bends outside, then works inside. And right there, number 41, Blackman had a chance to get hands on him early and did not. And he was able to get unimpeded into his route. Third down. And the catch made by Ted Ginn Jr. And that's a first down. So how about that? They went to second down at 22 after the sack and they convert. And you made the point, Tom, about getting into third manageable. And that's exactly what they did. So on third down, he was able to make a good, sharp throw on a quick breaking route as opposed to if you, you, they should have been in third and 10 or more after that second down uh, excuse me after second and 22. You know, the one knock on Newton has been his accuracy or lack thereof but don't tell that to Tennessee. Last week in his first 11 passes of the game wound up with only five incompletions the entire afternoon. Look at that throw. I don't know how many guys in the NFL can make that throw. And that is a first down catch by the rookie Funches. This is a perfectly coordinated effort. Terrific pass protection by the big guys up front. So he's got plenty of time to go through his progressions and then step into a throw outside to Devin Funches, who breaks off a sharp route against Bashad Breeland, who's had a very nice year out on the corner. But when you do everything coordinated that well, it's hard to stop. Redskins have a first year defensive coordinator in Joe Barry. They've had to play through a lot of injuries in that secondary. They handed to Ginn. 
man. That did not fool Perry Riley Jr. or the Redskin defense. I mean, whether you're talking about injuries or suspensions, Paul's missed a lot of time out for five weeks. Culliver, Breland suspended for a game. They brought in Blackman. Jarrett was drafted as a safety, been playing cornerback. So they got a lot of things going on most of the year. But now they're healthy. And trying to get solidified. And I think that the final piece will be when D'Angelo Hall makes a full time move to safety from the cornerback position. I think that'll help them all overall. Stewart, his first touch, that's the touchdown reception. Needed to get to the 43 for a first down. He's very close. Now watching this defensive line, really the front seven for the Washington Redskins, they need to go and tackle better. These backs are running through arm tackles. I mean, they're not gang tackling right now. That could be a problem. We saw earlier with the Cam Newton pass downfield, and that all came right off of the play action. So they need to go and stop that run first and then play the pass. Well, Joe Barry is tired of hearing about all the running yards against his defense, but the old saying goes, it is what it is. And that's a first down run by Stewart. You know, they took on New Orleans last week. They jumped on it from the very first drive of the game to the Redskins. So New Orleans is in throw mood. They give up 88 rushing yards. The so four games prior to that, they had allowed 748 rushing yards in four games. And they still gave up a 70 yard run to Mark Ingram in that game against New Orleans. So. They, they've got a lot of work left to do, and I think they're having trouble getting off blocks. I'll ask Tony about it after this play. Colbert spins away from the tackle and picks up close to three. Game break time. Let's go to Kurt Menefee back in Los Angeles. And a quick start to the Brock Osweiler era in Denver. Four plays into his first NFL start. He hooks up with Demarius Thomas for a 48-yard touchdown reception. Of course, he's in there for the injured Peyton Manning. 7-0 Denver on top of Chicago in the first. Tom Charles Goose. Well, Chicago, another one of those four and five teams. They're playing very well in recent weeks. Pottery. Inside the 30, down to the 25-yard line. Got a nice block from Funches, a rookie in front of him. How about this? Just being able to catch the ball, flick it out there with some dispatch on it. That helps the receiver. Look at that. Just boom. Ball's right on him. And what the Carolina Panthers want from Devin Funch at 17 is a better block out on the corner. He ran a route, and that fooled the receiver a little bit, and it served as a block. But his size, they want to be more physical. He fooled me. It looked like he was dodging guys to block. <laughs> it's like an old game of dodgeball without anyone throwing it at you. Yeah, but you can't play that anymore. Now. No, well, you know how it is with the school no, system. Tom, know you is. know how it Tony, is. Tony, I bet you were a monster dodgeball guy, weren't you? I played yesterday. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know, you know, I guess I'm incorrect. <laughs> Tell you what, the, at the end of the year, we're all going to get our teams together. All right. We'll all have right. a great time. We'll be awesome. at my house next week. Perfect. Thank you. On our own Thanksgiving Day ball. That's exactly right. Getting on second down. A perfect pass hauled in by Brenton Burson. That's only his sixth catch of the entire year. Four of them came in one game. How about the play call by Mike Shula? What they did was they showed that quick screen again, but they came back to the opposite side to number 11, Brenton Burson, who's up today because Corey Brown is out. Watch the fake left. See, bring the attention there. Then come back to the opposite side. That was the counter to the quick screen they had run before. Nice combo call by Mike Shula. Blown dead before it ever gets started on the first down. Before the snap, all-star offense number 73. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Michael Orr, he's having a real nice year since they picked him up from Tennessee. Struggled last year with injury. Had a toe injury. Only played in 11 games. But gave up six sacks, 26 quarterback pressures. Much more solid this year, back playing with that edge that we knew he had early in his career in Baltimore. Well, she was a central figure in that both the blind side, written by Michael Lewis. Lucha's on her faction. Defense, number 93. Five yard penalty. Still first down. All right, right back where we started. 
Big Trent Murphy out of Stanford. Both teams, two penalties in the early going. Haven't heard much from Greg Olson yet. Panthers leading receiver, and this is becoming almost laughable. Jason Hatcher this time for Washington. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 97. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Tony, I have to ask you because you played the position so well for a long time. We saw this same thing in a lot of college games last night. Is there anything that prompts a defensive lineman to, to think he can jump a little early? Well, you got to keep an eye on, you know, the center and him moving the ball. But with all the cadences that they have nowadays, it's a, it's amazing that I don't see more offsides than I have. But uh, you know, that's something that you got to go and practice, and you got to keep your eyes inside, watching the ball. When the ball moves, you move. Stewart takes it inside the four, down to the three yard line. Tony, you did mention that we haven't heard from Greg Olson yet. Last week against Tennessee, Ed Dixon caught that one yard touchdown pass off of a play fake. This is a prime spot, second down. If you're going to throw the ball inside the five, this is usually your spot for play action if you want to. Yeah, find out where he is. I'll tell you what, he's been in there a lot doing some great blocking. That's him there. Yep. It is play action. And it is Tolbert this time. Touchdown, Carolina. That's a happy young man. So is he. They are perking well. Tolbert will come out of the fullback position in the backfield behind Cam Newton. You've got Greg Olson going out in the flat. Look at Olson. All he does is post up like, as if he were a basketball player and get just enough of a defender to keep them away from Tolbert after he catches it in the flat and hurdles into the end zone. The Panthers did not have a passing touchdown in the first quarter in any game this season. And now two of them. I'm telling you, if you come to Charlotte, buy those tickets in the corner of the end zone because they're doing a lot of this. Generally, when the Panthers get inside the red zone early in the game, they run it. Got to go all the way back to 2012, the last time Newton threw two touchdown passes in the opening stanza. This time to Tolbert. And with their ability to run it so well defined, that allows for the play action down inside the five. Andre Roberts from the goal line with some running room. The 25 to 30, crossing the 40, across midfield with a man to beat. And Andre Roberts will take it the distance for the Washington touchdown. 99 yards. How about that? Or as Kirk Cousins would say, you like that? And when we met with Jay Gruden on Saturday night, we asked him about the road woes. And he said, we do not have to start out the game up 21 to nothing in order to exercise this big demon. We just have to stay on the horse. It appeared they were getting bucked off the horse for a while. And Andre Roberts got him right back in the saddle. Terrific vision. Great job getting it all the way to the end zone. And what a lift for this Washington team. Their confidence level much higher than it was earlier this year. And this is a young man when they brought him in from Arizona they had high expectations for Roberts as a receiver. He's had a lot of drops which has taken him out of the receiver rotation but this will help him elevate again. He was inactive a week ago with Jackson healthy again. But for the first time in his career he returns a kickoff for a touchdown. Good game 14 all. Well, he's not very happy. His special teams unit just allowed a kickoff return for a touchdown for the first time in 100 games. Yeah, Bruce DeHaven, the special teams coach for Carolina, who does such a magnificent job, been around the league for a long time, but that's the type of thing that'll take your smile and turn it upside down. Let's see if Carolina can answer with Joe Webb back deep. Saragusa better get out of the way of that one. 
Powell's going to catch it. And how about the last drive, guys? Washington had them in a long yardage situation, and Cam Newton's right arm got him out of it. Six for seven on the last drive, throwing the football accurately, and it culminates with a touchdown pass to Mike Tolbert. And by the way, the 28 combined points so far in this opening quarter, the most of any game played so far in the NFL in the first quarter. 147 games coming into today. Well, we are in NASCAR country, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. At the headquarters right here in Charlotte, so we are boom, booming along. Jonathan Stewart on the final play of the opening quarter. The Redskins are trying to get to 500. They're coming off their most impressive win of the year. But this certainly is a tall order against this Panther D for Cousins and the Redskins. They've hit on two big plays. The touchdown pass to Jackson and the kickoff return for this a touchdown. This is the end of the first. Fox NFL Sunday continues. After these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Set to begin the second quarter, a 14-14 game. Very entertaining so far. And you look at time of possession, total yards in favor of Carolina. You would think that they would have a big lead right now. Two big home run plays for Washington has it tied up. Excellent play. First time they've targeted Olsen and Compton right there to knock it down. Cam 8 of 11 before that throw, two touchdowns. Connecting with six different receivers. Olsen not one of them. We'll see what they do here. Third down. The run game is paramount for Carolina, but this is definitely a throwing down. Funches has been targeted a lot early. We haven't heard from Ted Ginn yet in this game in terms of being a receiver. Make the run. Great protection. And now it begins to break down. Flag comes down and Newton comes down. And then another flag thrown in. Bringing in flags back there. I think with all the movement in the backfield, sometimes it gives you, buys you time, and sometimes your offensive linemen end up holding on the second or third move. Holding offense, number 67. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. That's a four time pro bowler, Ryan Khalil. And sometimes when you move around a lot, you do buy the extra time to throw the ball. But with the defensive linemen stay, stay upbeat, relentless, keep getting after someone, sometimes you end up having to grab, grab them to keep them from getting to your quarterback. And that's what happened there to Carolina. Well, they need to wrap up Cam Newton. They're getting a lot of pressure, but he keeps escaping. It's a big man back there. Brad Horton. Puts a big foot on it. Crowder with running room. And what a play. It doesn't get any better now. Colin Jones, the first one down the field. That's why you pay those guys to be the gunner. All right, Thanksgiving upon us. Some of the best rivalries in college football, including the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame against number 11, Stanford. That, Charles, is a big one. That one's so huge because the college football playoff implications there are monstrous. To me, if Notre Dame wins that game, they cement a spot in the top four. You look at their overall schedule. Stanford right now hoping for some help to have a chance to be a two-loss team still involved. Matt Jones just simply no running room. Roman Harper there. So too A.J. Klein. Klein has played good football. You know, you talk so much about Carolina's defense, and the first two guys that come to mind are Keekley and Davis. Klein is working his way into a starting spot. And he had to start for a while this year with the injury to Luke Keekley. Had a concussion, missed really three and a half games during that time frame. Klein moved in and played that spot. He's also helped cover up the loss of Charles Johnson even before they picked up Jared Allen in the trade to try and help that position. Take it to Johnson, put it in the hands of Jackson. Norman slowed him down and Harper finished him off. And, Norm, him <laughs> and Norman's getting into it with Big Trent Williams, the offensive lineman who came out on the screen. Because what they did is they take the left tackle, Trent Williams, and pull him outside to help do the kick block to give him the tunnel to run the screen. And Josh Norman jumped up. I'm not afraid of you, big man. And they jawed at each other and pushed a little bit. 
Norman is having an incredible year. We'll talk uh, about him throughout the afternoon. Third down and nine. Jones short of a first down. But think about all the quarterbacks in the NFL. Now think about this for a minute. Norman has the lowest completion percentage of every defensive back in the NFL. One time they threw at him last week, a seven yard completion. In the last five games, they have only thrown at him 15 times total. And that's why when someone says, well, he hasn't had an interception in the last four or five games, but no one's throwing it over there. Right. Hard to get them that way. Way a booming punt chasing again to the seven to fair catch there. Now, you like Josh, I like Josh. I don't know if I like his chances against a big fella. Outmatched a little. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cricket Wireless, the merrier carrier, by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the NFL. And by Citizen Echo Drive, fueled by light, it never needs a battery. Charles, you said it earlier, the home of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, where our very own Daryl Waltrip is well represented. Yes, sir. Did you see that 43 there? Was that Richard Petty's one of the early Richard Petty cars? I know he's got a long guy. I know, a few, I know a few numbers, guys. Well first you are, Charles. He really is. Stewart. As his drive starts at the eight yard line, he's up close to the 15. Crazy first quarter in this one. You noted it earlier about the combined points, the most in any NFL game this season in the first quarter. The big, spot, the big shots, though, came from Washington. 56 yard touchdown pass to Deshaun Jackson. And Andre Roberts with the kickoff return for a touchdown. Newton, 8 of 12, 91 yards, two touchdowns. Vick with one hand, gave it to Stewart with the other hand. He breaks two tackles, still on his feet, all the way up to the 24-yard line. And Tony Siragusi, you talked about that. When the first got underway, four Redskins tackling. Yeah, they hit him behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Stewart's run, but... Watch right here. All of a sudden, boom, he should be stopped right there. Everyone should be running to the ball. Guys are stopping, thinking that he's going to be down on the ground. you got a gang tackle when you face a running back like Stewart. And there's Joe Barry, the defensive coordinator, who has 10 cups of black coffee every day before 10 o'clock in the morning. You think, he, kind of guy. you think he's not animated watching those guys miss tackles like that? He may have to jump it up to 20. Newton <laughs> <laughs> all day to throw. What a catch. It looked like that ball was actually tipped by Jarrett. And it was Cotchery who hung on. There is a penalty flag now. I mean, that ball zipped. Illegal contact. Defense number 29. That penalty was declined. The result of the play is the first time. That's against Culliver. He was just run over a minute ago by Stewart. But watch this ball come off of Cam Newton's hand. Right at the end, I don't think it got tipped. I think it got there beforehand, mm -hmm. and he was able to just trip him up. Otherwise, he's on his feet and still moving. First down again all day to throw, and there is Olsen for the first time today. That's Cam Newton's main man, his 46th reception of the year. And one of the great improvements that Cam Newton continues to make as we watch Greg Olsen come across the field and get in behind the linebacker that's Compton 51 is his ability to put some touch on his passes how about this throw over the linebacker and right into the bread basket of Olsen and a lot of moving parts to that this could be an interception a penalty flag is down and that is Culliver he will go untouched the other way the question is will this stand or was Olsen beyond the limit off that line of scrimmage what a crazy play, starting with a formation all the way to its ending. And Olsen is shaken up. What a physical play by Chris Culliver. He racked Greg Olsen 
and kept the ball in the air and then recovered first and took it out of the air and took it the other way. If this stands, this is a tremendous play by Chris Culliver. Look at him here. As he goes to catch it, hits him up in the up, up high. That may be where the flag came in, folks, because of where the, the contact was. That was above the neck, it appeared. And that might be the issue. See the forearm? Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 29. Mm. Well, the hell, no contact. 15 yard penalty. First down. And this is where it gets tough, Tony Siragusa. I don't know about this one, guys. The so-called strike zone that you have to hit in, hit and hit receivers and running backs. And Culliver, this play would have been celebrated years ago. And now, I don't know. Mike Pierre, have you seen it? Yeah, I have. You know, it's the nature of the beast with defenseless players now. You can't even use your shoulder. Let's take another look at it right here. I mean, area. Greg Olson is a big man. Okay. Culliver, I think, goes in. See, I, I don't know if I would have called that. I, to, I, Tony, I, Tony, that's tough. But by the letter of the law, he's up in the neck, right up, up in the neck area, and that's tough on him. He's behind the line of scrimmage. But as Mike Pereira points out, I mean, that is certainly priority number one: the defenseless players can't leave with the shoulder, can't leave with the helmet up above the shoulder area. Still on his feet, wrapped up by Compton, among others. The gain of three. And this game is going to get a little chippy now. There's a lot going on out there in Washington. Very upset that they just lost a touchdown on what they thought was a big time play by their cornerback. But if we look at it one more time, watch where Culliver hits it head first, meaning forearm and helmet into the head of Greg Olson. And we talked with Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator, about th specifically this, this type of contact. He said they've worked hard to define the strike zone. Actually used a baseball player as an example. And Tom, you call baseball. Where's the strike zone? Shoulders to knees. That's where they want you, below the shoulders, above the knees, for your strike zone. Carolina will spend a time out as Olsen comes back into the game. When Michael Orr is hot. Looks like he's hot with his quarterback. Charles, this is the second week in a row. We have seen Ron Rivera and the Carolina Panthers today, of course, trying to go to 10 and 0 on this season. The more you watch him, the more you like him. I know there are a lot of people around the country that today might be seeing them for the first time, but there is a lot to like. And in today's NFL with the flash the dash the big shots downfield throwing the football the coordinated pass plays they really are in a sense a throwback and maybe not as aesthetically pleasing as other teams are they don't care they are going to do it their way and by the way Seattle for the last couple of years yep. went to Super Bowls running it more than they threw it leading the league and running the football. That's how Carolina is doing it now. Stout defense, run the ball first, and then get big plays in the passing game. Thank to Tolbert. And now Newton looking around. Still looking. And that should have been caught. Instead, it is intercepted and then dropped. Holy mackerel. Pottery should have had it. And then Breeland should have taken it away. Kadri owes Bashad Breeland the thanks for not cat for not catching the ball. Watch Kadri go into the end zone, and Cam Newton behind him buys time for Kadri to run about three different routes, and then puts it on him. He goes up to catch it, pops it in the air, and a nice play by Devin Funches. Watch 17 come in as well, because Breeland has a clear shot at the football. But Funches also came in and helped make a play to break it up. Kotri could have been out of bounds there. The official's hat was on the ground right next to me. I think that maybe Kotri stepped out of bounds. Back of the end zone, Tony? Yeah, in the, behind, in the back of the end zone and then came back in. We'll take a look at it, guys. Carolina spending its second time out of the last three plays. All right, Tony, let's take a look. Right there in the back, I guess that's what he saw. 
and maybe, he had a better view. Yeah, maybe it was Ginn on the other side. And then looking at, yeah, see, Ginn yeah. was actually clearly okay. running in the white, right? Hold a second. That hat, Tony, did you get yourself a new hat? Because it yeah. was right there at your feet. Right at my feet. Somehow, I don't think you want an official's hat. Just okay. call it a hunch. Tell you what, being down here, just the sound of the collisions that are happening right in front of me are just amazing. I feel like I'm back playing a little bit. Which I mean, maybe I'll step back a little bit. Well, you better not wear those shoes if you're thinking about a comeback. Come on, man. These are speed shoes. <laughs> They're down eight. Blitz coming. And Newton just fires to the corner. That's going to be a penalty against the Redskins. Ted Ginn Jr. went to make his cut for the corner of the end zone. And Kaishan Jarrett, the rookie out of Virginia Tech. Pass interference. Defense number 30. The contact occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. First down. So watch it in the end zone, okay? Because Ginn's going to run a route to the corner. Kaishan Jarrett, number 30, covering him. And right there, he loses his balance and takes down Ted Ginn. But Ryan Kerrigan had done a nice job for Washington, forcing an early throw from Cam Newton. Notice he couldn't even step into it. Kerrigan was right there in a flash in his face. But his play was negated by the penalty by Jarrett. Top down. Nice play there made by Freeland. Second down and goal. It's all about getting penetration down here on the goal line. Watch the surge by this Washington defensive line. Everything up. Colbert has to go to the outside. Doesn't get in. And a nice job by Breland coming up to clean it up. You know what we haven't seen so far, guys? Quarterback run yet. He has not run the ball one time. Rose, penalty flagged in the end zone. He is caught by Ted Ginn Jr. No, it is not. Incomplete. And it's going to be holding against the Redskins in the secondary. So this will be an automatic first down at the one. This has got to be getting extremely frustrating for Washington. It feels like every penalty flag is going against them. Whether it's legit or not, in their minds, they're thinking, hold up a second. Are we going to get to play here? Although you can look at the lot of penalties and say that's why it was called. It's an incomplete pass, saying that the ball touched the ground. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number 29. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first time. Okay, this entire drive has been a seesaw affair for Mr. Culliver. So here's Culliver here, 29, working with Ted Ginn. He's got hands on him. Slight grab, I think, and that's what they caught early. And then Ginn has a chance to finish this off, and the ball, well, he looked like he had his arm underneath the ball. <laughs> to me, I think this is a good challenge by Carolina because, Tony, I don't know about your perspective, but I thought he had his arm all the way underneath the football. Yeah, I did too. I thought it was a catch. Carolina I thought maybe I missed something. It's challenging but. the rule on the field of an incomplete pass. So they go and decline the penalty. This could be a touchdown. So while the judiciary takes a look, we will step out. Is this a touchdown for Ted Yen Jr.? Tie game here in Charlotte, and I think this is going to be a great challenge for Carolina. I think Ted Ginn controls the football even as he hits the ground. It can touch it a little bit if he has control. The ruling on the field is reversed to a touchdown. The receiver got both hands on the ball and secure control throughout the process of the catch. By rule, the defensive holding penalty is ignored. Uh-oh. They better get those youngsters separated down there. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon for Cam Newton. And certainly Ted Ginn Jr. has found a home. With these Carolina Panthers had a really good season two years ago. Admittedly took the money to go to Arizona last year. Did not go well. He's come back this year. 
to the Panthers and is on pace for his best year of his career. Point after is good by Graham Gunnar. So frustration on this drive. A couple of chances to take it away. It ends up in a Panther touchdown. Today's game is sponsored by Visa Checkout, the easier way to pay online. Sign up now. Cam Newton just threw his 100th career touchdown pass. First game with three of them in a first half in quite a while. It's interesting to know that all of last season, Cam Newton threw 18 touchdowns. He has 18 as of today. It's interesting. They asked him earlier this week, what do you got, you know, what's the big thing? He said, just trying to get to 100. And everyone assumed that meant he was just making a play on words for 10 and 0. But he got to 100 touchdowns as well. Well, coming up, if the devil quit his day job, where would he go naturally? Los Angeles. New Fox show Lucifer coming in January to Fox. All right, 21 to 14. Charles Davis, Tony Siragusa, Mike Pereira, Tom Brennan, and our entire no. Fox crew from Charlotte. Can the Redskins what answer? The? They have after each prior Panther score. Down the middle and broke it up. Looking around for a flag is Derek Carrier, the backup tight end. I thought going in as this drive began, this is one where Washington has done a nice job this season of long drives. Ten plays or more, get their running game going, things of that nature. But missing on first and ten, now it's second and ten. I don't know if that put the run game back into effect here. No! Kirk Cousins may have to throw to pick what up the first it? down now. The well, they pitch it to Jimmo. He leaps over one defender. Ball's loose. And it looks like the Panthers have covered it up. They have. So Jones, for the fifth time this year, puts the ball on the ground, fumbles it, and loses it. The pursuit of Carolina is what makes them. Watch Keekley, watch Davis, watch these linebackers run to the football. And Keekley makes the tackle, ball pops free. See, right over the top, Keekley knocks it free. Is that Thomas Davis on it first, 58? Yep. That tandem of linebackers, that's two weeks in a row, Luke Keekley has caused a fumble. His second and third in his career. And that's Benny Ben Wickery did a really nice job, Tony, of spilling the play early as a cornerback. Well, the, the, this defense runs to the ball so well, that's why they're plus eight. I mean, any ball that's on the ground, they're going to have the best chance at it because they have the most guys around the football. From the 25, Newton on first down, screen to Stewart. And lost his footing trying to cut it back to the inside. A penalty flag is behind the line of scrimmage. Holding, offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty, still first down. What's a knock on Ori's been very good in the run game. He has struggled in the pass game. There's Matt Jones, a very physical runner. Had a big day early in his career running the ball, 123 yards early in the season. I think it's against Philadelphia. But that inability to hold on to the football will have him right over there where he is right now. On the bench. St. Louis, he had 123 Excuse me, yards. Game two. But ever since then, 181 yards combined over five games. And a lot of that has to do with A, he backs up Morris. B, they haven't run it well at all. They had a, and C, he's fumbling the ball. They had a four-game stretch where they couldn't really run the football at all. Right. And, and that was a problem. But if they're going to hand it to you, you've got to come up with it at the end of the play. And if, if that's not going to happen, then Alfred Morris will eat up even more carries as they try and get him back into form. As any coach will tell you, that's just inexcusable at this stage of the game. And that football that he bounced away in frustration, he needs to hold on to it right now. He's got to start exactly. gripping the football. Practice, practice. <laughs> start gripping the football. <laughs> don't, don't kick it away. Hang on to it, young man. You need it. You know, as a defensive lineman, they always used to tell you when a, when a running back goes and leaves his feet. 752 and start on my ready. 
and hurdles a player that's when he's most vulnerable to go and punch the ball out so and that's exactly what Keekley yeah. did on the tackle with the wrap he was punching at the same time well done by them. Chased by a host of defenders. How in the world did he get through? He's back to the original line of scrimmage. Tony, are they just not able to get off blocks? Talk about Washington's defensive front, or are they just making big plays in, in the run game, get, getting something out of nothing? Well, they're just staying, you know, the defensive linemen are just staying with those offensive linemen going down the field. With a, and that zone blocking sort of molds you to sleep a little bit. You need to go and get off the blocks. I mean, Stewart is doing an unbelievable job of being patient and reading his linemen up front. But, you know, those defensive linemen, you know, they're rushing the passer real well, but you've got to stop the run. Some beef coming in right now, guys. Stewart off to a big start today. Came in with 662 rushing yards. He will leave on this third down and two. And they've gone to the orchestration of their offense with Cam Newton, no huddle, handling things now himself. That's just a beautifully designed play. Trips to the left of the formation. And inevitably it becomes very hard, as we've talked about all year, to truly defend all three. Very difficult, but right now what's happening, if you look to the right of your screen, the trips formation as you described found the open target. But what's happening now is they've essentially put the offense in the hands of Cam Newton. A lot of no huddle. He gets up to the line of scrimmage, reads the defense, gets a false start thing gets a gets a read comes back and puts him in the play that he wants the mental acumen has really jumped for, for Cam Newton as his career has progressed they really trust him running the offense that's again thank it to him and now Newton to the five yard line second down and goal first carry today for Newton first design quarterback play for them and he is an integral part of their run game. He is their key short yardage runner. You would think it'd be a Tolbert or a Stewart. But this third and one, fourth and one, all year long, Cam Newton has been the primary guy to try and pick up the first down. Well, if he runs one in during this game because he already has three passing touchdowns, he will tie an NFL record held by Steve Young. 31 games with a pass and a running touchdown. It's incomplete third and goal. Oliver tangled up with Funches. Funches, this is where he will earn money in this league. Big red zone goal line target. Excellent coverage by Chris Culliver. You notice how he had his hands out to the side? Guys, you've thrown enough flags on us today. Don't you even think about it on this one. Chris Culliver selling sell the officials. He's got to sell it. <laughs> Third and goal. Newton to Olsen. Touchdown, Carolina. Going to go to the other corner this time. They're hungry over there for one. How about that? But the watch Cam Newton's head. Watch the head and the eyes. Looks one way, comes back the other, and zoom. Olsen to the outside, sharp cut inside, and that ball's right there. Throwing lasers, man. Cam Newton is throwing lasers. He really didn't need hands there. That one would have impaled itself into Greg Olsen's body. He didn't get it with his hands, it was stuck in his shoulder pad that was thrown so hard. Well, whether you like him or you don't like him, there is no denying. This is one talented cat. First career game with four touchdown passes. Well, the first sort of day for Cam Newton, first time in his career, four touchdown passes in a single game, and we still have 514 to go in the first half. And how about what's happened with them with points off of takeaways? They've had a big year of that. They've limited the points against them when they've given it away. But on takeaways, they've scored big. The first one today off the Coleman interception. This one off the Jones fumble. 
Out of his own end zone, Roberts has already run one back for 99 yards. Good return here up to the 29. Late flag, guys. Another penalty flag down on the play. Newton doing a lot of celebrating. And they might have to call for a new supply of footballs. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team, number 53, for piling on top of a player already on the ground. 15-yard penalty. Washington keeps the ball. First down. It's Ben Jacobs. Timeout. Man. Redskin defenders trying to catch their breath over there. Statistically, it's a game that has been overwhelmingly dominated by the Panthers. Right now, this Washington team has to help that defense in a big way. Obviously, points are the goal, but at worst, a calming drive to give them a little bit of a break. They can't let Carolina's hot offense have the ball again. Cousins on first down, Deshaun Jackson. That'll be a gain of close to six. And if you notice, Chris Thompson, who normally is your third down back, was the lone setback in that formation, Jones on the bench. And what did we see for a stat? Minus two yards rushing. That may signal Jay Gruden bringing Thompson in saying, we're going to have to throw the ball more, but maybe it'll be a controlled throwing game that'll take the place of a running game that we don't have right now. And again, if you're just joining us, Alfred Morris re-entering his ribs as he did last week. No running room there. Third down coming up, but first of all, let's go out to Los Angeles for a game break. Fellas, uh, Jerry Jones said he'd be singing in the shower because Tony Romo's back. That's a scary sight, but this is good to see if you're a Cowboys fan. Romo's back. 31-yard pass to Terrence Williams for the touchdown. 14-0 Cowboys. Tom, Charles, back to you. Mike was <laughs> going to be the Panthers' next opponent on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day. The Dallas Cowboys in Dallas with a well low back. Cousins. Boy, never turning around as Colin Jones. Ball almost hit him in the head before it lands in the midst of Pierre Garcon. A Washington first down, a much needed Redskins first down. Biggest first down of the day for Washington. To the top of your screen is Garcon, 88. And as you noted, Tom, Colin Jones buzzing out into the flat. Never senses the football coming until it's too late. He makes a reaction after it's in the hands of Garcon. I thought it was a nice job by Kirk Cousins seeing the pressure, staying in the pocket and delivering. Well, there's a lot of John going on over there. Well, Jones making a play here as they dump it off to Derek Carrier. That'll be a gain of a yard. You know, with the momentum on Carolina's side pretty much the whole first half, this is a very important drive right here for this Washington team. They need to go and put some points on the board. And like you guys said, they need to give that defense a little bit of a rest being on the field the majority of the time. Yeah, at worst, hang on to the football, give them some time. At worst, but we're all in agreement. Points, a key here for confidence. Second and eight. Lunging and appears to have enough for the first down. And when this young man is healthy, he is a mighty good player. Touchdown in three consecutive games. Five of them, in fact, in the last three Redskin contests. I talked about it earlier. When he's on the field, things change. Their points per game increased when he plays by about five, six points per ball game. Third downs, percentage jumps probably 10 to 12 percent yep. when he's in the ball game. First and ten from the 25. Cousins has it batted down at the line of scrimmage by Tony Ealy. Ealy filling in for Charles Johnson, who is on the temporary IR, and he is due Charles Davis to come back. Thanksgiving Day in Dallas. But think about the rotation they get then. Jared Allen, who they picked up in the trade with Chicago, may get more rest and become a situational pass rusher. Or will it be Charles Johnson a situation? Or Coney Ealy a situational? 
That helps them in a big way when they get him back. Yeah, Ely has a sack in three straight games. The Dallas also got Sean Lee back, guys. Yep. And this is Cousins. He fooled everybody. And he is inside the five yard line. There's a penalty flag at the 21 yard line. This might come back. Holding offense number 86. Ten yard penalty. And we say we all those nice things about Jordan down. Reed. And he is called for the penalty. And they use their Phantom Raider in a big way, meaning zone read with Kirk Cousins, who doesn't run it often. But you see right there, got his hands extended, got some cloth. And see, Kirk Cousins is not going to run that play very often. He ran it for a touchdown in their big comeback against Tampa Bay. But when you pull it out, it needs to work big, and it did. And now they have they lost it because of the penalty. Won't be a steady diet of Kirk Cousins running that play. That takes us to the two-minute warning. Redskins knocking on the door. To remind you, you can get apps, videos, and more at iTunes.com slash NFL. Two minute warning. Second down and 16. Redskins trail by 14. Ball of the Carolina 32. Cousins stripped. Ball is loose. It was Ely, who now has a sack in four straight games. If Saw it's, one official if point, it's but Jerome Boger not official yet. And he threw a flag. Threw a flag, he so he waited. The pull by Carolina first down. Holding. Offense number 76. That pin is the prime. First down. Say this Pony Ely is having an outstanding year. Really started to pick it up at the end of 2014. And there's where he's being held by Morgan Moses and still makes way. Look at him go and get the football and wrench it from the grasp of Kirk Cousins and possess it. Right there, you see the hold, and look at it. That doesn't deter him. Strip sack, takes the ball away from Kirk Cousins. And just think about that penalty, guys. They had first and goal in the five, inside the five yard line on that hold by Jordan Reed. They got called back. It turns into a strip sack. Carolina takes it the other way. Yep. So a sack in each of his last four games, knowing Charles Johnson is due back in five days. They're going to go for the jugular here. Screen to Fozzie Whitaker. Sandwiched by Redskin defenders, a gain of two. Panthers only have one timeout left. Clock continues to run. So does Whitaker. You got no situation. It's time to get back to the huddle and get moving. Nice to make your case that you should still be running, but you're wasting time for your football team. This play off over 20 seconds, and they hand it off to Whitaker. No, nope, Newton held on to it. So bring up third down at the 40. They don't appear to be in a hurry. Not a lot of urgency on this. It's almost like if they were hoping if maybe the first two plays broke, they might move it, move it quickly then. But since they didn't, it's almost like they're content to go ahead and just let this clock wind down. Yeah, but if they could get some points on the board, they could really take all the wind out of. Washington sales right here. Yeah, don't, I don't agree don't, with this at all. Don't, I don't either. Don't disagree at all because I thought that they would go ahead and move it quickly, but by their pace, they're just saying we didn't get anything big early. Let's just try and wind down and get out of here. We have an opportunity to take all confidence away from this team, and they're not doing it. See on third down. Spins away, and he's got running room. He'll get a first down. Step out of bounds right at the marker at the 48 yard line. So it stops the clock. 31 seconds in yes, Mr. Newton. A first half. Watch how quickly he's flushed on this play. I mean, that's Jason Hatcher again. Jason Hatcher is going to see missed sacks in his sleep tonight. Because he missed Newton twice on one play in the first quarter, misses him there, and it turns into a first down. Yeah, when you play a quarterback like this, all four guys up on the line of scrimmage need to play together. And has got to stay outside and get contained. Defensive interior guys, tackles, need to get upfield, get the penetration, flush them to the ends. You need to work as a group. False start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty. 
still first down. Not a penalty so far, huh, guys? So much so that Jerome Boger might be losing his voice. So they back him up five. They need roughly 20 yards to get to a spot where Graham Gano is hit from at least this year. 52 yards out. Have the one timeout left, so that means the entire field's open. They don't just have to play sidelines. They can take something down the middle if they want. Too tall for Funches. Second down and 15. 27 seconds remain. Nine and zero started by these Panthers. You go back to the advent of the Super Bowl in 1967. 19 teams have started nine and zero. All 19 have made the playoffs. 11 have gone to the Super Bowl. Seven have won it. Again, steps away from one tackle, gains an additional five yards and a first down to the 39. Now in this situation right here, you wish you had some of that time back that you wasted earlier in this drive. So now you play if you're playing for points you're thinking field goal quick out routes get your guys to the sidelines but Ted Ginn with a nifty move on the sideline gets additional yardage before being pushed out. If you can get something quick get it to the sideline you still have a chance to kick the field goal. Incomplete to Olsen who is slow to get up. He took that big shot to the neck area earlier in the game by Culliver. It's not been a fun first half for Greg Olson. See him here in the slot. Let's see if he gets a free release kit. No. What Washington has done more so than what we saw last week with Tennessee is they put people over him, near him, tried to make it a little tougher for him to get into his route. On that play, Will Blackman had hands on him getting downfield. Well, he took over that game in Tennessee last week. Now another penalty. Two teams have combined for 11. This will be 12. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 90. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's Stephen Pio, one of the two defensive linemen, along with Knight, they brought in during the offseason, picking up Pia from the Bears. That was their third neutral zone infraction and penalty of the game. Strange the penalties are fairly close to being even in terms of number, but the big ones have all gone yep. against Washington. No doubt half. about it. Not always how many, it's when. A bullet. Takachari down to the 24 yard line, clock under eight. He's going to hurry to the line of scrimmage. And timeout. All right, before the field goal, try what's coming up here in moments at halftime, Kurt Benefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, it's backup day. Rock O gets the go as a Bronco. Case Keenum is in for the Rams. Matt Hasselbeck is back for the Colts. Sanchez looks to make his mark in Philly, and Yates tries to bust out of the gates early. And let's not forget the guys who back me up. Oh, we say that with love, right? Now that. I love Kurt. He, Kurt had a little rhyme master going he there, did. didn't he? He's almost channeling his holiday time Dr. Seuss, wasn't yes. he? Yes. Oh, the nice. places you'll go. Well, let's see. They're going to. The holder is the punter, Brad Nortman, down on a knee of the 32. 42 yard field goal try by Graham Gano. And right down the middle. So 17 points and a half for Carolina off of Washington turnovers. Was that the most least urgent two minute drive you've seen has culminated yes. in points? Things are going very well for Carolina because that didn't look like anything like any normal two minute drill that you'll see with guys moving around with haste getting to their spots urgency the whole deal yet they found the plays necessary and made them and got down the field and kicked the field goal everything going Carolina's way it's been an incredible first half for Newton and the Panthers 31 points in the opening first half 31 to 14 at halftime 
and the Redskins won the toss you may remember deferred to getting the football in the second half and really what we talked about from the very beginning the Redskins have been great on the home front but they have been giving the ball away giving the ball away and giving the ball away when they jump on that airplane to get out of town. All right, let's send it to Kurt and the gang in Los Angeles for the Visa halftime, which begins right now. Half touchdown passes for Cam Newton and a couple of big penalties that have gone against the Redskins. Today's excitement brought to you by Nissan. Dr. Charles Davis and Tony Siragusa. Tom Brenneman, our entire Fox crew back in Charlotte. The overwhelming majority of America is seeing this game on Fox here in the uh, one o'clock start. I don't know how many of you maybe have not seen the Panthers this year, but that's about as good as it gets in the first half. And they're doing it their way. Yep. Physical team, chase you down on defense. Typically, they run the ball more, although they've had effective runs in the first half. But the big guy, number one, Cam Newton, showing off his right arm today. And he's been very, very accurate in getting it done. There have been some key penalties against Washington that have helped them along the way. Redskins get the football. They'll start it at the 20. Check in downstairs with Tony. All right, guys, listen, I talked to Ron Rivera. Uh, he told his team, to listen, we can't have any big plays. We can't give them up. We need to run the ball. We can't give them any life in the second half. Jay Gruden, he spoke to his team. He said we can't have the penalties, the tackling like we did, and the turnovers like we did in that first half. The one good thing is that we're only down by 17 points. We're going to find a lot out about our team here in the second half that we can get it done. Now watch if both of these teams come out. I was not impressed by the way this Washington team came out walking in the second half. And on the very first play from scrimmage, a big hit by Ben Wickery, forcing another Cousins fumble, but who recovered it? Well, to your point, Tony, if you thought Washington was walking to start the half, Carolina came out running. Yes, they did. You need a sense of urgency. When you're down by, you know, 17 points, you got to come out here with a little bit of life. I saw no life in this Washington team coming out. Still waiting for the official signal, and it is Carolina Panther football. 17 points off a of turnover so far today for the Panthers, and now they'll try and add to that. Watch to the right side of your screen from the back side of Kirk Cousins. Benny ben, Wick ben ben Wickery with a corner blitz. And look at how he does. Goes right for the football, knocks it free, and creates the scrum in the pile. And Carolina comes up with the football. But an excellent job by Ben Wickery from the back side, creating another takeaway for the Carolina Panthers. All right, Tony, I'm going to ask you a question. Charles, yep. I'm going to ask you a question. Both of you guys played the game. When a team comes out looking the way you just implied, Tony Siragusa, yeah. is that the coach's fault or the player's fault? Well, it's the leaders on your team, it's the coaches, it's the whole organization. you got to be prepared. you got to believe. You know, we talked about this Washington team not winning on the road. Well, that's a direct correlation. you got to come out here believing, have confidence, that you can come out in the second half down by 17 still be in this game. I have no confidence in them the way they came out. Look at this formation. And they give it to Tony. And he picks up a yard. Charles? And, 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 for, and for me on this one, having talked to Deshaun Goldson, who said, when you're on the road as a visitor, and Tony, you know this very well, you have to bring your own energy. Absolutely. Well, guess what? That's on the guys to bring their own energy. They know this as well as anyone. They're grown men. If they think it's some fire-up speech from the coach is supposed to do it, you've got to bring your own and be ready to go. 390 days since the Redskins defeated the Dallas Cowboys week eight in Dallas last year, their last road win. It's amazing. Everything that Jake Gruden talked about. Defense number 92. Five yard penalty. Still second down. We can't have penalties. We can't have turnovers. 
I mean, we're not even a minute into the second half, and we had one of each. And we have the fourth neutral zone infraction by the defensive line of Washington today. Think backside zone read. Watch to the away from the formation. Trying to go up the ladder to Olsen, incomplete coverage by Will Blackman. I thought they might run the ball there and try and get Cam Newton to pull it and go backside. Instead, they take Olsen here and run him. But a really nice job of playing the football by Will Blackman, number 41. Olsen trying to climb the ladder, and it's just a little bit too high. But Blackman was on the scene. Four different Panthers on the receiving end of touchdowns in this game. And now you can add another. Funches with a touchdown, the second of his career. And here we are, barely a minute into the third quarter, and Cam Newton has thrown five touchdown passes. And this is what Devin Funches was drafted for, 6'4", 225. Watch at the end of the play, at the height of the catch. See where the football is? As you see the defensive back go up for it, it's up over Chris Culliver's head. That's called putting it up on the shelf where the kids can't get it. And then they put it where the kids can't get it. That's, well, that's a great way of taking it there. We'll, we'll keep it for ourselves, but we'll give it to you later. Very nice. Started with another takeaway. 24 points off turnovers for the unbeaten Panthers. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Burger King. Now get 10 chicken nuggets for $1.49, only at BK. And by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. We're in the third quarter, and the Panthers have already scored 38 points. Did you say 24 off of takeaways Yes, and today? 24 unanswered. And coming into the game, they were already 63 points scored off of takeaways for the year. Career day for Cam Newton. We still have nearly an entire half of football to go. There he goes, the first one to Jonathan Stewart. Gets into the end zone, touchdown pass. How about to Mike Tolbert? Going to his running backs first, then Ted Ginn Jr. Cradles one for a touchdown. Greg Olson has to get into the act. He's been their primary receiver. And Devin Funches is making excellent strides as this season goes on as a rookie receiver. And Cam Newton, accurate, sharp, Sensational today. Eight different Panthers have caught passes in the game. Five of the eight have caught touchdowns. Run him, run him, run him. Alfred Morris has not returned since an injury in the opening quarter. And you can hear the crowd Luke for Luke Keekley. Well, you, they got to talk a little bit more about that defense. I mean, with all these turnovers, that's a direct, all the points are a direct cause of all these turnovers by this defense they just play lights out rush the passer run to the ball play the pass they're just getting better and better as this game goes on and you saw there a moment ago more turnovers for the redskins in this game than rushing yards oh my goodness that's a man who had the strip a moment ago but abe and wickery getting the nod today for the injured charles tillman and what is Jordan Reed go doing here? Look at 86 right in front of you. He's supposed to block it. But when Ben Wickery read it so fast, he never even took your normal, what you call as a defensive back, your cheat step to make sure it's not a pass behind you. He just read it, trusted his eyes, and flashed right away. He got there before Jordan Reed could block it. He almost could have caught that ball. He was there so fast. Third down and 14. Here comes Keekley. They picked him up late. 
And it's three and out for the Redskins. At one time, this was a 14 to 14 game. And guys, this is your standard. We've got every gap covered. Luke Keekley was running right down the middle, took away the middle of the field. Ben Ben Wickery is having a fantastic day, staying right in the hip pocket of Pierre Garcon. And Kirk Cousins throws it away. Washington has to punt it away. And it's trust away. Line almost got that one. Oof. Yep. And that'll bounce inside the 30. One of the most beautiful states in America, North Carolina. They call it the Tar Heel State. You like the big city they have it. What about the Blue Ridge Mountains? And brother, the Outer Banks. Doesn't get any better than that. Well, I've told you already, Newton for the first time in his career, a four touchdown game. Now he has five. And for the Panthers, 31 points in the first half, the most in franchise history. It's a franchise that has been to one Super Bowl. 2003, they have never won a Super Bowl. And they are clearly in total command of this one. But oh, there is a long way to go. And they have a short turnaround because Thanksgiving Day will be here quickly and they'll play Dallas there. And how about a comparison? Now listen, say what you want about this. Ray Horton, the defense coordinator of the Tennessee Titans, yes. when we sat with him last week, when we said, okay, Cam Newton, first thing he said was LeBron James. That's who he reminds me of in terms of impact, stature. And when he walks into a room, same thing with LeBron James. All eyes go to him, whether he says a word or not. They have that type of presence. And you know, I don't know if television is able to truly put into perspective how big Newton is. We just showed you that, you know, basically he's as big, not as tall, but as big as LeBron James. Well, now all of a sudden you put football pads on a guy. <laughs> and spikes. Brings <laughs> you another half inch, inch. Well, down injured. Yeah. He's already filling in for Andrew Norwell. Is Amini Silatolu the left guard? I would imagine Chris Scott would be the first guy up there. Tennessee volunteer coming in at guard. Silatolu going out. Norwell down today with the hamstring injury. So, you know, when you put it all together, Tony. And we talk about, I think it's much more impact and presence that we're talking about. That these guys tilt the balance of a room, of a league, of a franchise, when you're talking about their impact. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, listen, you have it. And Cam Newton, I guess, has it. We talk about it all the time. It is presence, it is leadership. Something that this Washington team is lacking. Stewart. Still churning those legs full up to the 43-yard line. Stewart has had a very good day. Touchdown receiving, and he's carried for nearly 75 yards at almost a six-yard per carry clip. Remember last week we talked about most of his career he split time with D'Angelo Williams Remember when they were double trouble. Sure. So he didn't get nearly as many carries, and his odometer is a lot lower than you would expect for a guy his age. And he's starting to use it up this year. Last five games, he's averaged 22 carries per ball game. Just didn't get it off. Newton rolls high to Ted Ginn Jr. Third down. You know, guys, I just took a walk over towards the uh, Washington Redskins bench. Just. Uh, you want to talk about zero energy over there? I mean, everybody's just waiting for somebody else to do something. I don't see anybody standing up, taking leadership over there, trying to go and get the guys fired up. I mean, these guys are, are, are just, it seems like the game's over over there. They need to have some kind of, you know, talk or get somebody over there to fire these guys up a little bit to get back into this game. And it is far from over. We've already seen the Redskins come back in that Tampa Bay game. Not great in Tampa Bay compared to Carolina, but they came back from 24 nothing down to win. Newton hit just as he was starting to throw it to Ed Dixon incomplete. So a rare stop. It's been a long time. That's good pressure on the backside. Jason Hatcher 
He has not gotten that elusive sack today, but he did impact that play. Backside of Cam Newton forced the inaccuracy. You know, watching these defensive linemen rush the passer also, I mean, they've been out there so long, these guys are exhausted. Wisconsin trying to pin it deep and into the end zone. There is a long way to go in this one. But so far, Panthers looking mighty fine. Today's game is sponsored by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. They had a very nice tailgate today outside the stadium in honor of Steve Burns. Beloved reporter for our NASCAR on Fox coverage, he passed away after a long battle with cancer in April. Survived by his wife Karen, their son Bryson. He's a huge Panthers fan. Steve, though, a Maryland native, was a big Washington Redskins fan. Our thoughts and prayers to his family. First down, sack. Ryan Dallaire, the first one there, and then finished off by Kyle Love. So everyone's getting playing time now. Watch the defensive front. Dallaire works inside, works all the way from the defensive end position up the middle, and then Love, who was playing defensive tackle, followed him to finish things off. And, you know, for Dallaire and the Redskins, that's got to be like salt on the wound. They signed Dallaire the last week of September off the Redskins practice squad. Four days later, he had two sacks in a game at Tampa Bay. That was nearly another sack. Cousins in survival mode back there. Let's go back to Los Angeles for a game break. All right, guys, Miami trying to spoil Tony Romo's return. Ryan Tannehill going up top finds Kenny Steele. Send the end zone nice grab for the score. His second of the season. We're tied at 14 in the third. Tom Charles, back to you. Look, if anybody thinks Tony Romo by himself is just magic elixir and everyone else is going to lay down because he's back, <laughs> it doesn't work quite that way. Better to have him, but it's not going to be easy for Dallas. Just nowhere to go for Deshaun Jackson. That is Norman, Colin Jones all the way. And this one has a chance to get ugly. There's been a lot of talking and pushing and shoving going on all day long. And this play call was simply to get it out of uh, Kirk Cousins' hand quickly and get it to someone. That's just a play call to get it, to keep the quarterback out of harm. Because when they called the longer developing plays, Carolina's just gotten to them big time here in the second half. Beautiful punt by Way. Good junior Bobbins. Slung down to the 33-yard line. 8.47 to play in the third quarter. Newton back on offense when we return. We still have nearly, well, more than a quarter and a half left of football. And a career day in the Tar Heel State for the Panthers. Five touchdowns for Newton. Ty Steve Berline's franchise record. Five different players with a catch. A record. A record 31 points in the opening half. And now if you are an offensive lineman and running back for Carolina, this should be a time you live for. Most offensive linemen I know like to run block more than they like to pass block, pass protect. Running backs like to have the football and run it. This is what you should get a heavy dose of here in the second half from Carolina. And if you're Stewart, you're sniffing a 100-yard day. Sitting at 75, they're out of the eye formation. Oh, they're going to give it to Ted Ginn. And Ginn a good run up to the 32-yard line, very close to a first down, depending on the spot. And this gets set up because they use a lot of misdirection, does Carolina. They use a lot of what they call ghost motion. And this time it's not ghost because watch Ted Ginn come from the backside. See, a lot of times they will run the ball inside with Jonathan Stewart and fake that play to Ted Ginn. This time they went to the counter, faked it inside, handed it to Ted Ginn, and he picked up nice yardage. Chris Culliver is a native of Garner, North Carolina. 
played at Garner Magnet High School. He is the injured camp Redskin. Missed three games already this year with an injured knee playing in back-to-back -back games for the first time since. Has played hurt throughout the year. Really gutted it out. Had a really tough game playing on an injured knee and his teammates really respected him for getting out there because that was back when you alluded to in the first half time, not alluded, but talked about a secondary that's had its issues all year long. Having guys in the lineup, guys hurt, guys suspended. Right. They needed him that day because they were down on numbers and he found a way to play through. So he's got a lot of respect in his team, in his, in his locker room. Will Blackman has played a lot of football for the Redskins. He'll take over for Cone. Again. Pulled down at the 35 yard line. Panthers now 21 consecutive games of 100 yards rushing or more. And by the way, 20 in a row came coming in. That is shared by the Seattle Seahawks who will play later on. What a throw, what a better catch even by Olsen playing in his 137th consecutive game here today. Iron Man also. Yes. And he works in line. He works flexed out. He works by himself as a receiver. Look at the crowd. Finds his way inside, adjusts to the football, and makes the catch. 2011, the Chicago Bears traded Greg Olson to the Carolina Panthers for a third-round pick. Why? Why? And I, I ask a question. <laughs> that was Every the time we see the Panthers. What a craziest, craziest. I've ever seen. Pitch it to Stewart. And that'll be a gain of 11 on first hand. You know, you look back on Olsen's career. In the preseason of his rookie year, first round draft pick by the Bears. He injured his knee in the preseason. He missed the first two games of his NFL career. He's never missed a game since. But his best season with the Bears would be his worst season since coming to Carolina. Rounds into form and utilized in a big way. The number one targeted receiver on Carolina's team this season. Over a thousand receiving yards, 84 hey, catches. His first Pro Bowl a year ago. He did it, no, he did it. That's the way Charles and Tony look when it comes to picking up the dinner tab. <laughs> Short arms. Luke is on infraction. Defense, number 92. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. They're always pointing down at our producer, Mark Teitelman. Give it to him. Give it to him. God love him. <laughs> <laughs> That's our guy. And that is the fifth. Is that not the fifth? Fifth or sixth neutral zone infraction from the defensive line for Washington today. And of the eight Redskins penalties, seven of the eight have been against the defense. Hey, what? What? Stewart closing in on 100 yards. I'm not here to bury anyone by any stretch of imagination, but Tony, if you've got five or six neutral zone infractions in a game like this today, does that just speak to the player's own discipline? Absolutely. I mean, you got to, you know, you can't look at the big things until you take care of the little things. And staying on side are one of the little things. I mean, that just goes, you know, it's a, a direct reflection of who you are. You're undisciplined. You're not getting it done. I understand, you know, one or two offsides because you want to go. You got a guy like Cam Newton. You want to get a pass rush on him. But as many as they have, five or six. I mean, at at some point, I mean, come on, it gets it gets to the point of ridiculous, in my opinion. And you know, you look at these Redskins defenders. They have been on the field seemingly the entire game. A two to one margin in time of possession in favor of Carolina. Three rushing yards on the game for Washington. And for them, that's, the, that's a formula for disaster. Because first and foremost, they have to run the ball in order to be successful. They got more turnovers than they do yards on the, uh, the camp, on ground. It's always a bad stat for a team. Yeah, I would say so. Pitch it to Stewart. Chris Baker still getting after it, making a nice play there. 
So third down. Second down, I beg your pardon, coming up. And here's the thing about Washington is they try and pick themselves up and finish out this game and find a way back into it and maybe get into it in the fourth quarter. The big thing for them, though, this division, the NFC East, no matter what happens today, Why they're open? still in it. No matter what happens, that's the focus point for Washington right now. Can they start to steal something on the road and help themselves out in a, in a race down the, down the stretch? That was Tom's opening line. Who wants to win the NFC East? Looking to get and overthrown in the back of the end zone. Well, you know, let's go back to, to the NFC East. Tony, you brought it up. Giants at 5-5 five and five have a bye week. Redskins look like they're on their way to 4-6. and six. Philadelphia last check was down two touchdowns at home to Tampa Bay. And Dallas tied on the road in Miami. I think Dallas just went ahead. All right. So either way, though, I mean, Dallas has got a lot of heavy lifting to do to get totally in it, but no one's out of it. That's the, that's the whole point. That's why Tony Romo's return was so heralded. Still got a shot. Well, don't forget these Panthers were one game under 500 last year and won their division. Oh, boy, right there, Newton missed a wide open cotchery inside the five. And this is what Mike Shula will talk with him about when they do watch film. Cotri working in here, working right into the seam. And what it, I guarantee you what Mike's going to say is some variation of today it didn't matter, big fella, but in a tight game when we're in the, we're in the playoffs and trying to win, you got to hit these. Those are the ones you're going to want to hit down the road. Today, so far, not a big deal. But down the road, we've got to make sure we make those plays. Graham Gano from 48 yards away. Good snap, good hold, and a real good kick. 41 on the board. This game was tied at 14. Well, you know, you ask the question at this point, uh, Charles, 41-14 ahead. How much longer are you going to leave Camp Newton in this game? Derek Anderson hasn't thrown a pass yet this year. And, you know, we ask this question every time we have a game like this. And more times than not, those guys stay in the game. Yeah, they do. <laughs> I mean, we remember we asked about Carson Palm earlier this year, right? We've done a few games where he said, how much longer? And usually by the end of the game, he's been out there. So that's kind of the NFL way, it appears. Well, the Redskins have minus 17 yards of offense on three possessions here in the second half. Thanksgiving weekend, some of the best rivalries in all of college football. And a real big win on Saturday. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame with Ohio State getting upset yesterday. They are in prime position. But Stanford <laughs> stands in the way. Can they tackle Christian McCaffrey? Because no one else has so far this year. Right. That young man has played at an exceedingly high level in every phase of the game. Kick, return, catch it, run it. He does it all. First down, throw and catch. That'll be a gain of four. Man, I know he threw that one outside, but Pierre Garçon was wide open on the next level of that play. Tony, that pass rush, I think, is influencing Kirk Cousins' decision to get rid of it fast. And that second level may just take too long because they've been getting to him in a big way this game. Yeah, his eyes are not looking downfield. Penalty flag down, reception made by Chris Thompson. But well, we wait on the penalty behind the line of scrimmage. Referee threw it. That's usually not good for the offense. Holding. Offense number 75. Five, yeah. ten yard penalty. Replay seven, but second down. You know, guys, we talk so much about Carolina, understandably so, here today with the way they're playing today and this whole year quarter plus away from going to 10 and 0. Look, I'm a member of the media, but look, we frequently look our brethren in the eye and you say, what were you thinking about there? I am always just stunned by articles that are written when a guy comes off having a good game. And Cousins has had a good year. Not a great year, a good year. First year as a full-time starter. 
But coming off that monster performance last week, first down throw and catch to Jackson there. And the article started up about, do you give Kirk Cousins a long-term contract? With this much time left in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, 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 it feels like, you know, and there's always something to write, and I'll get into it a little bit more after this. this Look, I get it. I mean, the Redskins have had some questions at quarterback ever since the whole RG3 saga played out, and that's been a, you know, outside of the one great year by Griffin, it's been a problematic spot, the most important spot for a long, long time. Without a doubt. And I think that's why those articles get written. That's why it's talked about on Sports Talk Radio. That's why we're talking about it now. They're looking to find that person who can solidify things. Can be their guy that can carry them into the future. There's another fumble. Redskins may have covered this one up. They fortuitous bounce after the initial miss. And this is Chris Thompson, and look at the ball get popped out. Who is that there? 58 Davis. Thomas Davis popping it out. This is why Carolina is so good on defense. They make the they make the play that you're supposed to make, and then they make a little bit more on top of it. They attack the ball. You know, you make you secure the tackle, Tony, and then you make sure you make the next play to try and create the takeaway or the turnover. Clay Boston should have had that. First down, blitz coming. Reed across midfield, and now he fumbles the ball. And the Panthers aren't going to whiff again. It is Keekley who covers it up. You can talk all you want about this offense for the Carolina Panthers, but this defense has been ferocious today. Forcing turnovers, yards. I mean, this Washington offense has got, not been able to get anything going, and when they did, all of a sudden big plays or turnovers have, have popped up. Tony, I give them credit. Running to the ball, Josh Norman knocked it free. But Jordan Reed's going to have to take some blame on that one. He's carrying that thing out there as loose as just walking down the street, not worrying about anybody coming by. And he gave Josh Norman an opportunity. He took advantage, but when you watch it on tape, that was an era of omission as well as commission. Camden does remain in the game. Stewart, 15 yards away from a 100-yard rushing game. I would imagine they'd like to try and get him to the 100 mark. That'll be a gain of four on first down. Let's check in back in Los Angeles for a game break. They had it with DeMarco Murray. Joseph Randall didn't handle, the, handle it very well. Is Gary McFadden really that guy? Of course, I'm sure uh, you know, somewhere uh, Troy Aikman might be saying that uh, Stewart will officially go over 100 yards rushing on the day. Aikman might be saying, yeah, but every time we got inside the 20, I turned around and handed it to a guy named Evan. <laughs> Helps out in a big way. Watch the left side here. Look at Trey Turner, 70. And then Ed Dixon, 84, coming around. Both of them wrapping from the right side to the left side to create great space for Jonathan Stewart to barrel through. One hundred and three rushing yards for Stewart. His second one hundred yard rushing game of the season. Forty one fourteen Panthers. Fox NFL Sunday continues after a word from your local Fox station. Twenty four points off of turnovers. Twenty seven unanswered points for the Panthers. 15 minutes away from a 10-0 start. Stewart for maybe a loss of a yard. To me, you're getting in that dare territory now. If I'm the Panthers. Fozzie Whitaker should be carrying a ball a bunch. Jonathan Stewart, I put it, I put Jonathan Stewart in, in dry dock for the day. On the shelf. Called a call today. I mean, you've got a quick turnaround Thursday. 
you're going to Dallas. Yeah, rest them, rest them legs. I you mean, know? even Cam. I mean, they, you know, they, they got to be thinking about maybe taking him out, staying healthy, giving him a little bit of a rest because obviously, like you said, with a short week, I mean, not a lot of time to recover. Colbert loses two. Third down and 13 coming up. Because we talked about it, Tony. Every time we talk about getting a quarterback out of the game early, that guy stays Never in. Never happens. <laughs> that guy Never stays happens. in the NFL. It's different, different world up here. Yeah, we had Arizona three times in the first four weeks. They were blowing everybody out. We asked Bruce Arians about it. He looked at us like we had three heads. <laughs> He's like, were you nuts? That was Bruce's great quote. We always go for the throw, guys. Period. Funches goes up to get it, and that's the first down to the 14-yard line. Tell you what, this kid is starting to come of age right before our very eyes the last three weeks. All the way at to the top is Devin Funches, number 17 in black. A little stutter and go on Chris Culver. And again, Cam Newton puts it up where Devin Funches can go up and make a play on the football. Look at the strong hands. Culver trying to slap it out. Funches brings it in. He's really making progress. Training camp was limited. Hamstring injuries. Had to learn as a rookie. Came along a little slower. Corey Brown was playing well. And then Corey Brown gets hurt this week. Funches jumps in and continues to prosper. Yeah, two weeks ago he had his first touchdown. Also had a 52-yard reception in that win over Green Bay. I think that was a game where a lot of people said, whoa, hold on a minute. You know, they started the year at 4-0. Then they went through that gauntlet, the shocking win in Seattle. They beat Philadelphia, in overtime defeated Indianapolis, and then beat Green Bay. Get everyone's attention. As you said, the win in Seattle, when you say shocking, big reason they were down nine deep yep. into the fourth quarter and came back, bam, bam, for touchdowns to win it. Forward to the nine-yard line. Colbert has a distinction of being the first player out of Coastal Carolina to play in an NFL game. He has had a rock-solid career. Home of the Chanticleers. Yes. Yeah, they're getting better too. Ray Lewis's son just uh, went there, yeah. transferred over from Miami, Coastal Carolina. Chance do a nice job, you know. They, 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 excellent one double A or what would you call football championship subdivision program. Great, great facilities. Quarterback Tyler Thigpen, remember he came out of there. Josh Norman came out of there. Yes. Over lost his footing. And Newton will trot off the field and out comes the field goal unit. Culver's limping off the field. Yeah, he was holding his ankle right after he slipped on the turf there. And that's what you worry about with the quick turnaround to Thursday afternoon in Dallas. Yeah, maybe that right there might be changing Ron Rivera's mind about getting, maybe getting some of these guys out of the game. So after the Jordan Reed fumble, field goal is good. Now 27 points off of turnovers today. The day's game on Fox is sponsored by Xbox One, the official game console of the NFL. By Target, expect more, pay less. And by Miller Lite, back in its original bottle, but not for long, it's Miller time. Those are the Titans in the AA classification of high school football in North Carolina. Defending state champ Mallard Creek beating Butler 35-30. Head coach Mike Palmieri and his Mavericks advance on to play Huff Friday night. Thanks to Anthony Flores of Fox 46 here in Charlotte for that great video. Love it. I mean, the high school football that we've seen and we've profiled throughout our season, isn't it so much fun to see oh, those kids yeah. out there playing and 
if we're lucky enough to hang on, we'll be calling a few of their names <laughs> as yeah. we go along. Well, of course, Tony, your son uh, wrapped up his season yesterday. Charles has did two weeks ago. You know, it's fun when you talk about high school football. You know, I've talked to guys who played in the league, you know, longer than I. I had 12 years, but, you know, you never forget those days playing with your buddies in high school. Should the Redskins sign Kirk Cousins? That's coming up. Well, you may remember last week it was the Redskins who had 513 total yards of offense here, most in a game since 91. They have allowed 510 to the Panthers today. Boy, Cousins, I mean, you got to feel for this guy. He's got no chance. He is getting lit up every time he takes a snap. He's got no chance. This is Mario Addison, 97, and Ryan Dallaire, 91, saying, let's meet at the quarterback. Look Malachi, at that. Malachi Crunch. Was that on Fonzie? <laughs> that was. That was the, uh, that was the <laughs> oh. Demolition Derby with Fonzie and Pinky That's Tuscadero. Right. Yeah, that's right. The Malachi Crunch. <laughs> That's made by Reed. All right, let's get back to it, guys. I threw out the question earlier before a fumble by Reed about Cousins and how it was written this week that, you know, maybe at the end of the year, the Redskins are going to have to make a decision on whether they want to extend him on a long-term deal. And most of what I read was, do they do it right now? <laughs> Let alone wait till the end of the year. I would wait till the end of the year, see how this plays out. Consistency is the key, and they still need to get some more pieces around him. It's obvious. But I would definitely let him play his way to it or not. Reed running the wrong direction from the first down. You know, staying with Cousins or not staying with Cousins, remember, if you go and you go after somebody different, you're going to have to start all over again. Whether it's a young guy, a guy who's maybe uh, you get in free agency, but now you got to teach him the whole offense one more time. Tell you what, can this organization go and put, go through that again? So it's going to be one of the questions they will have to answer. And I saw Robert Griffin III in pregame. He was getting his extra work in and the whole deal. And I talked to him a little bit. Said he's trying to stay strong and, you know, mentally stay with it and the whole deal. And one thing we talked about, America loves comeback stories. He will have an opportunity to have a comeback story somewhere. Well, the Redskins have finished in dead last in the NFC East in six of the last seven years. They'll go for it on fourth when we come back. This game is sponsored by T-Mobile. Ditch your carrier and switch to the uncarrier. They'll be celebrating a 10-0 start here in Charlotte and all over Panther country. 8.41 to go. Fourth down. Redskins need to get to the 30 to convert. And they will convert, read the reception across the 30. I mean, look at that picture right there. 44-14, look how many guys are around the ball for this Carolina defense. And most of them are second string, second, uh, second line guys. They've got most of the starters in key positions out of the game now. And these guys are running to the ball, as you, as you noted, Tony. I mean, this is, this is when you know that you have the right rhythm. You have the right guys on your team. You have a guy, you have a you know, a, 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 a smart, good locker room. Because the young guys are going and doing exactly what the older guys are doing, running to the ball. They don't care what the score is. They want to go out there and play. That's when you know you got something really special going. Well, the three-time Pro Bowl left tackle, Trent Williams, is being looked at. First down for the Redskins to the 30. And since coming into the game has picked up his second sack. Now this is another guy. Another former Washington Redskin. And they had to bring in Ty Inseki, number 79 for Trent Williams. And right away Mario Addison attacked him and got to the quarterback and dropped him. Now unlike Ryan Delaire, the Redskins put on their practice squad and lost to the Panthers. The Redskins are one of four teams they decided to pass on Mario Addison. The Bears, Indianapolis, then Washington. He came to Carolina here in 2012. And has found a great home for his skills. Pass rushing specialist. Fourth 
down coming up. Let's send it back to Mike Hill in Los Angeles. Got him down the stretch. I've seen errors happen. He throws a pick. There's a fumble, and he gets one more shot. And it usually turns out well for them. At home. At home. He's at home. They're absolutely nails. Benson, a fair catch. Newton's day is over, and what a day, a career day, and a day of a lifetime for many youngsters. Five times. Look at the look on that little guy's face. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Dan there. Great stuff. It really is. I mean, and remember, you know where the original idea came from? Mike Shula, his offensive coordinator. He did, that's when Cam was in the midst of not smiling enough, not having enough fun playing, not having any joy. Mike advised doing that. Now, Mike deflects all credit from it from that point forward. Says it's Cam's, but it was Mike's idea originally. Cam ran with it. Something special about Cam Newton and children. Raylan Beam, young man, certainly in the fight of his life. Cam coming over before the game. Of course, there was a story earlier this year. Young man here locally that was battling cancer, didn't have much time to live. Newton shows up at his birthday party. Ice cream truck. Yep. For everyone. Listen, what, say whatever you want about him, okay? He may not be crazy about us adults, but he loves kids. I mean, he'll spend all his time with them. He said to us in the meeting, he said, I'm a kid myself. I love kids. And it's genuine. I don't care what anyone says, I'll stand up on that one. For, for as long as you want to discuss that, there's no way you can fool kids. Kids have the best meter, right? They, they can okay. sniff it out in a heartbeat if you're trying to fool them. There's no fooling those guys. Yeah, it's nice to be 10-0, isn't it? <laughs> it is fun to be 10-0. And at least for one week, they won't have to answer any questions about dancing because Cam did not run one in today. Well, you did make a point about that. that it takes some, well, you talked about this when we were away, that that actually took some pressure off the rest of the team. You know, all we talked about was that. We didn't talk about the streak. We didn't talk about trying to continue to win. We just talked about that. Interesting. Whitaker, slow to walk home. So be... Their 14th consecutive regular season win. But of course, that's carried over from the end of last year. They'll go to 10-0 this year and take a look. The only games against teams at 500 or better. The two games against Atlanta and the Giants. Now, in all fairness, Dallas, that's Tony a big Romo one. is not a 2-17. No, that's a big one because Dallas will be fighting for... If they win today, their playoff loss. <laughs> well, that's the kind of day it's been for the Panthers. In a lot of ways, it's a basketball state. We talk about the University of North Carolina sure. and NC State. And little hoops right there. Derek Anderson, right back to him on the fortuitous bounce. But the Tar Heels getting beat by Northern Iowa last night in hoops. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't Mark Price now the head coach here at UNC Charlotte? He, he certainly is. Well, what a player he was. He did not want him on the foul line at any man. Point. Former great star in the NBA. Uh, his, his son's playing Cleveland. at TCU. Played at Georgia Tech. Fair catch in the 20. Thanksgiving weekend. Or any day. For Heard with Colin Cowherd. Weekdays, noon Eastern on FS1. Okay, we talked a lot about offense, haven't we? Tony's brought it up a few times about forgetting this Panthers defense. How about this one, guys? How many how many snaps do you think the Titans took in the red zone last week against Carolina's defense? None. Bingo. Zero. How about today for Washington? None. Bingo. And is that none? N U N. N U N. There you go. When you do it two weeks in a row, it goes from N O N E to N U N. None. I got to believe that is something that has rarely occurred in the history of the NFL. It is where in back-to-back -back weeks, nobody gets a team to the red did zone. Not, right, did not have a snap inside the red zone against the defense. 
They defended very well. I mean, Ron Rivera, obviously he's a defensive guy, you know, playing with the Bears. Sure. You know, great personality, defensive minded. I mean, he takes a lot of pride in how this defense plays. He's in their meeting rooms all the time. You know, those guys that are on the field right there and on this team on defense, they pick his brain all the time. He tells them what it's like to play the game. It's and it's special. They've definitely taken it to the next level here in Carolina. Fox Sports proudly supports Folds of Honor, its mission of providing educational scholarships to families of military members who have been killed or disabled while serving our great country. For more information, we invite you to visit foxsportsupports.com. Tip of the cap indeed. We want to thank all the military people out there who are watching the game today, right guys? Yes, yes, we do. What do you guys do? Keeping our families safe. Amen to that. Can't thank you enough. And that is to all those who have served, are serving, or will serve. Well, I think I'm not, I don't know about you guys. I have military in my family that I, re I mean, I respect no one more <laughs> than what they've done for us and the way they carry themselves. Proud people. Absolutely. Carrier up to the 40-yard line. Final three minutes. 10 and 0, man. 10 and 0. You know, I live in Cincinnati where the Bengals started 8-0. They lose a game, you think it's the end of the world. They put but somebody so wisely made the point if somebody would have come to you at the beginning of the year and said you're going to be eight one after nine games. Would have ran with it. And now here you are if you're at the Panthers, incomplete to Jackson. Of course, New England will have a chance to do it as well tomorrow night. Yep. Ten and oh. What I found interesting about Cincinnati was when they did lose the game to Houston. As you pointed out, Tom, all of a sudden it changed the whole perspective of everyone. Instead of 8-1, wow, what a great start. Oh, God, they just lost one, and now they can't go to Arizona. They could be in a two-game slump. I mean, immediately the thing changes. Instead of 8-1, we're doing pretty well. Third down and five. Cousins hanging in there. He's taking a beating today. Defended beautifully by Shaq Thompson. Mike Kill in L.A., how about it? Hey, guys, uh, Panthers may have the best record in the NFC. A lot of people say the Vikings may have the uh, best team. Adrian Peterson on display against another former MVP, Aaron Rodgers, in the pack, trying to end a three-game slot. Most of you guys will see this America's Game of the Week next on Fox. Our game today produced by Mark Teitelman, directed by Greg Scopatoni. Our associate director is Alex Olson. Broadcast associate Jordan Wolf. Our technical producer is Bob Muller. And our North Carolinian in tape, Scott Fields. So we thank our entire crew here today. Town inside the final. Hudson Valley, what do you think of, Mr. Davis? Oh, I think of home. That's New York State, baby. That's Apple Country. And a connection with you and Dave Gettleman, the general manager of the Panthers. He head coach of Spack and Kill High School, home of the Spartans. I played at New Paltz High School. And we, oh, were, good, we actually played against each other on two occasions. Did you I make that tackle on that pitcher right there? Yeah, listen, I was running it, Goose. I got <laughs> past that guy. There's Coach Gettleman there. His back and kill Spartans undefeated, taking on my new Paul Huguenots, led by our head coach, Coach John Ford, who's had a tremendous influence on my life. And Coach Ford and Coach Gettleman are still friends. We beat them 7-6. They went for two to try and beat us. In, you know, out of bounds. In Coach Gettleman said he was still in bounds. Coach Ford, I guarantee you, you thought he was out of bounds. Great times going against Coach Gettleman. What a fantastic job he's done here in North Carolina. Nice and the guy who's earned his way into this general manager spot. All those years with the New York yeah. Giants working his way up through, you know, it's just been fantastic. But when he took over Carolina, the salary cap was strangling them. And he got them out of that and continued to acquire talent. And look at what they have. People forget a year ago, they had four offensive linemen retire and lost their top four wide receivers to free agency. A year and a half later, 10 and up in two minutes from now. Take a look at this. Panthers having a little fun, and why not when you're ahead 44 to 14 and about to go to 2-0 on the year, 10-0 on the year. Pose men pose. 
If it works, stay with it, right, guys? All right, they're having a good time, and they've earned it today. Real loss of a yard as we're under two minutes. Now we showed Charles a minute ago. Look at the big fella. Wow, Kendall that wearing that New goes. Jersey. <laughs> is blue that steel. Blue steel pose there, Tony. I like it. <laughs> See, this is really cruel. Hey! I had a few sports Jose, pictures. You got to put what up that? a... What is that? That's guys and dolls. Right? Guys and dolls. Is that, is that a sports? Really is that a sport? Cool. I thought we were going to go with sports Jose, stuff. Jose, who are you playing? Scott yeah. Masterson? Oh, my God. You look like you. Look like Frank Sinatra. You look good. Did, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, didn't Sinatra... Didn't, <laughs> Hey, didn't Sinatra, Tony, didn't Sinatra win an Oscar for that bad boy? Yeah, I think so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Although, Tony, you reminded me, after we saw these pictures last night, and I said, come on. Right. You could have found one of my sports pictures from high school, and you said, or we could have shown your picture when you appeared in South Pacific. Do you have the pose? From down South, there on the sideline. From South Pacific. Let me see. Let me, we got to see this shot now. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> what, did, what did you, Tony? Is, is that, is that <laughs> Tony? Is that how you pose when you were singing? There's nothing like yeah. a name. And my buddy's next to me with uh, a coconut bra on. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a good scene. It wasn't a good scene. Didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, good much my, didn't do much for my popularity Six. in high school. <laughs> Tony, you have to sing Bloody Mary for us on the way to the way to the airport. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, that's good stuff. Penalty flag. Right game. Kicking team. We'll move it into the play. Still four 28 down. seconds left. I think I had the solo on Valley High. Valley High. Remember that song? I, I do. do. But yeah. the, the problem was, Tony, is that Bloody Mary actually sang Valley High, so I, that scares me a little bit. Oh, well, yeah. The more you could do. <laughs> exactly. I loved it way back then. Long, hey, snap, long snapper, right? Long snapper, that's right. <laughs> Gordon just going to run it around and take a safety. Unless the clock just simply runs out. Nobody's trying to tackle it. But now he'll step by the end zone, making it 44-16. That was the longest safety in the history of maybe the NFL. we got to look that up. Did we start at 28 seconds on that? Man, what, what happened? <laughs> I think this was 12 seconds. It is 28 seconds on the game clock when we snap the football. Now look, they do a nice job. Tolbert does a nice job protecting and then stays with it. That's tough. Being, that was, it's that, tough being a punter, isn't it? They they executed that very well. Houston Bates was the guy trying to get there, number 96 for Washington, and boy, they really made it tough on him. Tony, we're going to see the Panthers in two weeks. If they find a way to win next week on a short week on Thanksgiving in Dallas, yep. how do you like their chances of going undefeated? I'll tell you what I like it. I mean, listen, the, the, to go undefeated in the NFL is, is miraculous. I mean, it's, I mean, it's been years and years. I mean, Don Shula, the last team, to go undefeated and actually and actually win the whole thing, right? Other than New England, that won you know the regular season, went undefeated. But uh, I mean, if if they can pull that off here, I mean that's that's a feat in itself. I mean that's that's something that's really special. It is tough to win in this league. I mean, playing it in 12 years, I know, and it's uh, and, but you, it doesn't matter unless you win it and go all the way. You could be undefeated all you want, but it's uh, you know, the Super Bowl is, is your goal. It'd be interesting to me to see if they decide what their philosophy is going to be down the stretch. Right. If they get to that point, do they make the decision to quote unquote rest the, the front line guys and play it out that way? Let Derek Anderson play play quarterback, or do they say we play it all the way out no matter what? Yeah, you philosophy know. would be interesting to see if it gets formed that way. If, if they get to that point, you know it's tough, and, and, and it's, it's pretty cool that you brought that up. Is you know we won it in Baltimore in 2000. You know, we were, we were in a wild card. We had to play all the way through. And I think if we would have had to take a week off, I don't know if we would have won. Yeah. You know, we, we had the rhythm. We had everything going right. We wanted to keep that in there. And, uh, you know, obviously we were lucky enough to go and win the Super Bowl. But uh, great win today by the Carolina Panthers. Cam Newton, a career day. Five touchdown passes. And a 44-16 win. 
Take a State Farm game break and send it to Los Angeles to Kurt Menefee.